what is up with my hair? Alright, anyways, hey guys, so today we're gonna do authentication stuff uh, with Passport.js. Um, so, let's open up our package.json to see what we are missing. Alright, so we're gonna install a couple packages. Um, so, yarn, add, and let's see what we need. Um, we need nasjs slash passport, right? Let's see. Yep. Uh, we also need. Do, 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 do. We need the actual passport package. Uh, we're also going to need passport.jwt for JSON web tokens. And I believe that should bring in regular JSON web tokens. So we don't need to add that. Um, do, 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 do. I think that's all we need. So I'm going to let that go. Um, and then after that, we're going to add the types for passport and passport dot, uh, password, passport JWT. Um, so yeah, let's add those types. Types slash passport and passport dash JWT. And all of them are going to be dev dependencies. So they should be added down here. All right, cool. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a passport strategy, I believe. Pretty sure that's the first step. If I'm wrong, well, I will definitely catch myself. So I don't think Nest has a generator for strategies, since it's technically just a service. So we're just going to uh, create it ourselves. So touch source auth, and this is called the JWT strategy dot TS. And let's just open that up. Source auth JWT. All right. Um, it's going to be an injectable. Injectable because it's a service. Export class JWT strategy. And it actually extends from Passport. And this is going to be a little weird. So Passport strategy. And we're going to feed in strategy here. Strategy from passport.jwt. Let's get rid of this require. So it's actually going to be passport strategy from. Is it from this one? Yeah, it is. All right. So because we extend it, we're using actual inheritance here. We're going to need to call the super method. And let's see. Uh, so passport strategy takes in an object for its argument from request extract jwt dot from auth header as a bear token, and we'll, we have to instantiate instantiate that. So and then the secret or key. And uh, right now I'm just going to put down secret key as a string. Uh, we're going to change that to an uh, environment variable uh, shortly. And then finally, I'm going to add in our auth service as a dependency injection service. Oh, we didn't create our auth service yet. So that, so we should probably do that. Um, but while we're in the strategy, I think we also need to make uh, one more method. And it's going to be called validate, which takes in two arguments, a payload, which is going to be of type any for now, and done, which is verified callback. And that comes from passport-jwt. And let's see, return done, null, user, and there's a payload dot issue that which is a thing that 
the JWT service will create for us. All right, so before we come back to this, let's actually make a service. So ng generate service auth. Oh no, let's generate service auth. Not sure why it took so long, but that's fine. And in the auth service, we're gonna create a couple things. So once I find it, um, no, not that. No, here we go. So let's see. Uh, of course, we're gonna have a constructor, and we're gonna inject our user service. User service. User service. And we need uh, two methods. Yeah, two methods. Uh, one that the strategy is going to call, which is called the validate user, which takes in a payload. And right now it's going to be a type any. We'll define the type after we figure out what our payload is going to be. Um, and then we're just going to do await this dot user service dot find and I'm actually gonna make a new um, method called find my payload where we just pass in the payload but before we get out of the auth service I also want to make another method called sign payload which also takes a payload of type any and we're just going to return sign, which comes from JSON web tokens, where we provide the payload, the secret key, which again should be from our environment variables, and then some options, which I'm just going to add expires in. And right now, for testing purposes, it's going to be 12 hours, but when it's in production, I would rather have this be a week, so seven days something like this, seven days. But let's do 12 hours for now. And now we just need to create this method. So, here we go. So let's see, we have sanitize user, create, find by login. So now we just need to make async find by payload. Which takes in a payload and uh, of course now I have a brain fart so I don't remember what do, 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 do. Oh, okay so we're gonna take the username out of the payload and we're just gonna return this uh, we're actually gonna have to await this so this dot uh, user model dot find one of the username so the payload is going to look uh, pretty similar to a user we just need to use it so find my payload now exists which makes the auth service uh, valid and now we just need to return to our JWT serve or strategy and figure out what user is in this context and that's what we're going to use our dependency injection from private auth service service there we go and what did it look like again uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. this is the strategy which I am not a part of uh, service strategy here we go so we got the constructor now we just need the validate so const user equals to await uh, come on await this dot uh, auth service dot dot a user is it dot a user yeah it is uh, where we're providing the payload and then if not user we'll throw an error or we'll actually 
um, use the verified callback to throw the error. So the first argument is the the actual error. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, it's going to be a new HTTP exception coming from NestJS with unauthorized access HTTP status of unauthorized. Not, not that. And then uh, user is going to be false. I believe that's all we need. I'm going to remove this space. Let's see, the last thing we need to do is uh, I need to actually add the service here. So JVT strategy goes here. And uh, we just need to edit the, um, the auth controller to actually provide the service coming back. And I'm just going to make a a small um, getter here uh, with an opt guard so we can test out our our passport so it's not opt guard it's use guards opt guard and then we're going to provide the type of strategy that we're using which is the JWT service or JWT strategy, and then it's just gonna be a a simple I don't know. Um, let's just do a temp auth function, and we're gonna return auth works, and that goes to the get of the root of auth, so that should be good. Now we just need to make sure our login and register provides the token and the payload, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Const user equals to, do, 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 do. I actually could do this. Const user equals here. And then we're gonna make a payload. And the payload is going to look like this. So username is going to be user.username. Property username does not exist on type user. Yes, it does. Await, find by login, payload, user. All right, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. Seller is also going to be user.seller. Oh, this is the the types problem that we had earlier, where I need to change this to username, and that that problem will go away. And then finally, we just need to create the token, and we just await this dot auth service, which we need to also add in. So I'm gonna do that. Private. Auth service, auth service, service dot sign payload of the payload, uh, da, 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 da. and then we can finally return an object that has the user as well as the token. I'm gonna save this to get rid of the empty spaces, and then similarly for register, it's gonna be the same process. And cause payload where we have username is going to be user dot username, and we also want seller because we're going to do um, role at the uh, role based authentication for sellers. So we're going to add that, and of course we're going to sign the token. Service dot sign payload and return user and token. So uh, once everything is hooked up, which we've done, all we need to do is rerun the ETL job.
or actually we need to run that server so let's do that start dev and then make a new window where we just do node etl and let's double check this should be login all right and login should give us the token so oh, i'm in the wrong window and there's our token yay all right so i don't know how to copy and paste from the terminal which is a uh, something i should have done so i'm just gonna do some code in the etl job to get the token from data and then do another uh axios method so i'm just gonna do um do, 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 do. so user token i'm just gonna do some nested destructuring get the token here cons data equals to await axios dot get http colon slash slash localhost 3000 slash auth and we just need to provide the headers which all right headers authorization which is the string of bear and the token and uh, let's see and then we can just console log the data and we could check if auth works so do, 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 do. so yeah I can just do rerun the, the script and it does so auth works we're using the correct token and uh, yeah so we have authentication hooked up we have the user services uh, working for a register and login and we could also um, oh and then finally we have we could check if auth if auth prevents you from going in without a token so I'm just gonna comment this out and uh, da, 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 da. also gonna comment this out so it's just gonna be an empty object and this should return us an error Status 401. No, that's that's correct. Um, I'm used to doing this, so my async methods are usually inside of a try catch. And where we can also log out the error. Cause I'm not used to seeing the stack. I'm used to seeing this. Alright, cool. And this is what's gonna be returned to the the client. Status code 401, error is unauthorized, which is what we want. All right, cool. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. We just added authentication with a Passport. And normally I create a middleware for authentication where I attach the user object to the request object, or the express request object. But I figured I haven't used Passport in a long time, so I, why not let it do it for us? And it probably does it a lot in a lot safer way than what I would do. So, yeah, we use Passport. Yeah. All right. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video where instead of just doing um, a script to do all of our testing manually, we're going to start creating tests in our in our application um maybe a unit test maybe the end-to-end -end test i first have to figure out how these things work so yeah i'll see you guys in the next video